point is this, we, we've already um, uh, given hints that HS2 is a white elephant. That needs to go. Uh, the house well, can of... we stop? After all the money that's already been spent on it? Yeah, it's, Hannah wants it's, to it's jump a, in. Go on. It's a, it's a hated white elephant project that wastes billions but, but, of pounds. Nobody wants it apart from that, George Osborne. But that's Remember one him? That's one small issue, isn't it? I'm not saying HS2 doesn't matter to some people, but you need policies on a lot more things than that. We do. I mean, the first thing I'd say is... You can't exaggerate what you achieved. It was the European election. Two thirds of people didn't vote in it. So it was, it was the highest turnout since 1994. It was 1.5 percent higher than the last European election. Well, you can, you can compared denigrate that a, all you like. Compared to a general election, it was a minority of people but who voted are. in it. Europeans always no, are. No, they absolutely always are. Yeah. And UKIP won last time, you won this time. But the other big problem, look, is that your only real policy is Brexit. People and voted that for is, it in no, mass. But, but, look, I campaigned for Brexit in 2016 in the referendum. But I did it, I suspect, for entirely different reasons this, to you. This is the first time I've been on this show with another Brexiteer. <laughs> yes. uh, Thank because, you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what, what would you think are, what you say, so, so for my reasons, such as? So from my think? point of view, <clears throat> I am an internationalist. I support solidarity of working class people across Europe. But I think that the EU is a big business club and comes with all kinds of pro-privatisation anti-workers rules that, for example, are obstacles to nationalisation, measures that I would hope a left Labour government But that's what Nigel Farage out. talks but, about. But, so but, why yes, he talks about them, but he is in favour of the privatisation of the National no, Health no, Service. No, no, that, and that's no, going to no, be no, the problem no, that, that you have. No, no, no. Look, 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 Martin, no, no. Let, let Martin answer that one. Oh, right, and then I'll come back in. in. What you're talking about is a comment Nigel made many years ago when he was a uh, leader of a different political party. You're going to have to wait and see what, what our position is on, on, on all of these things, and it's coming soon. But on the point of it, you know, our voters um, voting as a protest and going back to their party, that's absolutely not what I've been hearing the last four weeks. You know, there is a sense of you total... You have to accept, Hannah, don't you, that, that the country feels as though it's mightily disillusioned oh, with ordinary totally politicians. Oh, I totally accept that. They're, they're people are disillusioned. But the question is whether you will... Look, people are angry and fed up, and that's about Brexit, it's about the MP's expenses scandal, and it's about the fact we've had a decade of economic crisis and working-class people have paid the price while a few at the top have kept but getting if richer. The, but the if question if you look is at the whether you're going to be able to keep harnessing that. If you look that, at the candidates that, that, that stood for the Brexit party, you know, n none of them are from the established political class who went to Oxbridge and straight into the corridors of power and have never done a real job. We have entrepreneurs, business people, you know, journalists, doctors, yes, you know, lawyers. What, and your what, but you're going to gonna have to, you're gonna have to become very have... grown up very quickly, aren't you, and deliver not only on Brexit, Precisely. but deliver on the other things that you promised. Let me, so let you let haven't me give you an example. Yet. Look at what's happening with British Steel and the terrible loss of jobs that yeah, that the, is going to EU, mean. You know, Absolutely. As you know, would have, prevent, would have prevented us the, from doing anything about uh, it. E yes, but actually you could nationalise but the EU would object to it, but we wouldn't let them stop us. I wouldn't let them stop us if I was in government. Well, they would stop But me. that's why, that's one Kate, of the reasons that I'm a Brexiteer. But my point is, is the Brexit party going to stand for the nationalisation of the no. steel industry? I'll, I'll, no, I'll, you're I'll, not. But that's what the say, have voted for you. I would strongly Brexit say no. Party, what people like you, Martin, change. Yeah. It's yeah. about the sheer fact that they brought London to a standstill. It was under the Public Order Act. Hannah, very quickly, because Martin's so dying to get in, I want to make sure we hear <laughs> the you. The thing is, that's a very dangerous road, isn't it? If you start to say that because a peaceful protest is inconveniencing people, you've got the right to mm. prosecute them and lock them up. I mean, I'm going to be demonstrating against Trump when he comes to Britain. Are I'm you? sure it will mm. inconvenience people. <laughs> um, but should we not what, be allowed to do it? What about when workers go on strike, London underground workers, and bring London to a halt? That's inconveniencing people. Should they be locked up? You have to have the right to peaceful protest. This was a vitally important issue. So and why are the police? Should not why do you be. think the police are taking such a hard line here? Anybody? Isn't that leading us very, very gently, yeah. ever so slowly, into a? police state where they're starting to think up the laws I that make life more convenient for them. The police state is getting arrested and charged for protesting, which I think is the wrong route to mm. go, unless it's a violent and, and intrusive offence. And by the way, they have enormous amounts of powers already. I mean, I've been kettled for long periods of time on protests. I've had all kinds of experience. I've been arrested, by the way. And this is a question about what kind of protest is most effective. I was initially arrested when I was very young and charged with kidnap, believe it or not, for peacefully protesting about about a pensioner who had been sent to prison because he couldn't afford to pay his poll tax. This is going back to the yeah. days of Maggie Thatcher. Yeah. But that was an effective protest. We weren't charged with that in the end. We were done under the Public Order Act to highlight this terrible injustice. Mm. But 
it wasn't that protest by small numbers of individuals that stopped the poll tax and got rid of Maggie Thatcher. It was 18 million people yes. refusing to yes. pay it. And I fully support these climate protesters and absolutely think they shouldn't be prosecuted. But I also think in the end, the hundreds of thousands of school students coming out is more effective than the mm, small groups. I agree. And if we could get workers coming out on strike... And look, uh, do, you remember the on the question do you remember the Countryside strike? Alliance march as well? I mean, that was enormous, brought parts of London to a standstill. Of course, it didn't last days and days and days and days and days. Yeah. So you think there is some sort of limit should be had? Would you agree on a limit? No, I don't. I think, you know... We... Greenham Common Peace Women, they went on for years and years and years. Yeah, but it didn't, bring, it didn't bring an entire city to a halt. And I think that's the point. The, the Met are concerned, and even the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, was saying that this has gone on long enough now, like after a week. And sure, surely... Your anti-establishment they... credentials are already wearing off you. All right, all right. Let's, <laughs> not, let's not make this it's an attack. It's about allowing people to Martin live their lives moment. without, you know... Let's see what people at home are life. saying. All right, calm down. Storm, who else have we got? Well, on that note, Andy from Liverpool is on the phone now, says he was very impressed with the protests. Hi there, Andy. What impressed you about the protesters? How about the lovely way they conducted themselves? They were peaceful, law-abiding people known at the time. And it... I think it's the, the police who should be up before the magistrates, the way they manhandle certain elderly people and elderly women. So what... I what... mean, they were there protesting about the planet. They weren't exactly the poll tax riots or the riots no. in Paris with the yellow shirts on. They were peaceful. <laughs> Very so true. Was. So they not Martin. So what do so you think... Sorry. What do you think of the police cracking down on them so hardly, so, so harshly, trying to... Uh, suggesting that they're going to prosecute every single one of them? Well, I, the heads of the Metropolitan uh, Police should be ashamed of themselves. What are they after? Is someone at all these big businesses in London on their backs or something mm -hmm. to get something done and get some repayment back from them? So they blocked up London. So what? I'm mad. And I'm sorry that your, uh, your capitalist friends have been uh, interrupted for a week. I'm very <laughs> sorry to hear that. I was at the Battle of Orgrave, mate. OK, Andy, we get your point. We, we get your point. I must say, I'm, again, uh, if I lived in other places, I'd be very annoyed at the fact that we're all going, oh, poor London. Yeah. It, was, yeah, yeah. it was blocked up for a bit. <laughs> Storm. Next up, we're going to speak to Susan from Hampshire, who says they should have protested outside the Chinese embassy. They were wasting their time. Interesting, Susan. You think there are bigger and better <laughs> things to be protesting about than the planet? <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, I think they should have gone to China... India and Russia outside their embassy, where they're the biggest pollutant. Ah. Um, we what it, what the UK admits in one year, China um, in China does in one year, UK does in a hundred years. So that's where the main problems are. And I think they were a bit harsh on the protesters. So I do agree with a lot of what Martin says. Um, but I. I think that most people in the UK have a very high awareness of climate change and um, they're doing their best, you know, well, I mean, best. even on an individual basis. You know, I mean, we, we do. We have, a, we have a pretty yeah. good reputation for what we are doing, but it's yes. just not enough when you look at the entire planet. Isn't that true? Yes, but we, we are an entire planet, as you say. Mm, yes. Yeah. And it has to be tackled globally. Yeah. Yes, yes, it does, yes. But also what yeah. we do as individuals, I think we do mostly do our best, but it has a limited effect when I think 70% of uh, emissions come from the big corporations. So you've got to tackle that as well. How long have you been protesting about things all your life? All my life. Really? I, I first went on strike from school when I was 14 against Maggie Thatcher taking, uh, forcing young people onto youth training schemes at that point in time. So I've always been campaigning for working been, class you're... people and supporting Marching. the miners' strike, by the way, on the guy who was on before. Oh, that right. was one of the first things that I did. Amazing. Um, yeah, a life in protest. Yes. Sounds like a good book. <laughs>